Hello and welcome to Luminar Coffee Break. I'm Angela Andrew and today we're going to be talking about how to correct color in light painted images. Specifically today we're going to be talking about steel wool photography which is a lot of fun. You're literally playing with fire so I encourage you to make sure you do it safely. We're going to talk through what it is, how to do it safely. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll go ahead and get started. So up on the screen I have an image that I captured during a steel wool photography shoot. I went out with a camera club and we had a really great time. One of my friends was flinging the fire as I call it and I was able to sit back and take some pictures. So let me go ahead and jump over to a couple of web articles that I picked up and these links are in the comments below in the, in the description for the show so you can peruse them at your convenience. I'm not going to sit here and read it word for word. You can go and read it when you want to have uh, when you have time. I want to say hello to Jerry. Hello, Pat. Glad you guys are able to join us today. All right. So let me go ahead and scroll down a little bit here. This is an article about how to do steel wool photography. And you can see it's you have all of this light, all of these little streams of light. And that is actually little pieces of fire that are flinging everywhere, everywhere. So that's why I call it flinging the fire. So you put steel wool inside a stainless steel whisk. You tie a rope to the end of the whisk, you light the steel wool on fire, and then you fling it around, it sends sparks flying, and you can create some really, really cool effects. Now you are literally playing with fire, so I encourage you to take some safety measures. Um, one, you can see some gloves picture here, so if you're the one flinging the fire, gloves are a must. I also recommend wearing a hoodie, long sleeves, closed toed shoes. Um, if you're standing back and you're taking pictures, a hoodie and long sleeves are also really important. If those little pieces of hot steel will hit you, they're very, very hot and very uncomfortable. I'll show you in a moment what that can do and how to protect your camera as well. I also highly recommend keeping a fire extinguisher with you and making sure when you do a technique like this that you're at a place where you're not around flammable items. So for instance, when I did this shoot here, we were at the beach underneath a concrete pier. Don't do this underneath a wooden pier. Wood, very flammable don't recommend it. Under a concrete pier, we were okay. So let me go ahead and show you just a little bit of a cautionary tale of what can go wrong if you're doing still wool photography. So this here is the Point Reyes shipwreck, a uh, really iconic shipwreck here in California that a lot of people used to go and photograph. I never got to see it before a photographer went there, did a steel wool shoot, and ended up catching it on fire. It ended up burning and is barely there anymore. So please, if you decide to try this technique, be careful, make sure you're doing it safely and taking precautions. You also want to make sure you protect your camera. So let me go ahead and click back here to the grid here in Luminar and show you this image. So I typically don't recommend using a UV filter on the end of my expensive glass. I don't like to put cheap glass on the end of my expensive glass. This, however, is an exception. When you're doing steel wool, I highly recommend putting a filter on the end of your lens because you are literally flinging pieces of molten steel wool out in the air. And this is one that landed on my filter. I've gone out and tried this technique twice. The first time I didn't have a filter and I got very lucky. The second time I went out, I knew I had been tempting fate the first time. So I went and bought an inexpensive UV filter, put that on the end of my camera. And this is what happened. That is a little tiny piece of steel wool that is fused to the front of that filter. So this filter is now my steel wool filter. I still have it, and if I go out and shoot steel wool, I'll use it again, but that is the only thing I use it for. So make sure you protect your gear as well, and like I said, long sleeves, have a fire extinguisher with you, and just be safe if you're going to try this technique. But I do encourage you to try it. It's a lot of fun, and it's a great activity for a group. So if you have a camera club that you're going out with, you know, see if somebody in your group wants to give this a try. It's something fun and unique to do. So let's go ahead and play with a photo that I took. Let me go ahead and hit the G key on the keyboard. I'll go back to my image here. And it looks like Pat has a question. Um, can you elect to leave Luminar AI open when you apply and edit on a photo you brought in from Photoshop um, so the program wouldn't have to reopen every time? Unfortunately, no. The way the plugin works is when you, um, when you launch the plugin, you do your edits, you hit apply, it closes the plugin, takes you back to your host program. There isn't a way to leave the program open to speed up the time in between. Unfortunately, that's just the way it works. Hello, uh, Joseph, glad to see you today. All right, so let's go ahead and play with this photo. Let me show you the before. And you can see that the colors were not great in this. And the biggest reason the colors didn't turn out great in my original straight out of the camera 
is because I had my white balance set incorrectly or I just didn't have it set creatively. So let me right click on this image, go to adjustments, and we'll revert this to the original. And I'll walk you through exactly what I did. So we'll start by going over to the edit tab and I'm gonna go first to composition AI. And I'm gonna do my up right here because those pure pilings are a little bit skewed. You can see there's a little bit of distortion. So that helped a little bit. I'll hit return on my keyboard. And then I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom and go to my optics and do that auto distortion correction there. And that's gonna make an even bigger difference and help straighten out some of those lines. I'll also remove my chromatic aberrations for good measure. Now there's still a little bit of distortion as far as how those pure pilings are lined up. To fix that, I'll go back up to my composition AI. And this is where I can use these 3D transform tools and I can ever so slightly move these about to straighten up the image and make it look a little bit more symmetrical. So maybe not quite that much. It only takes a very small movement there. Uh, let's see here. Jerry says, do you have to apply anything flammable to the steel wool? To my knowledge, no. You just have to light it on fire. So the article that I shared, and it's down in the description of the video, it tells you what type to buy. There are several different um, finenesses, uh, different grains of steel wool that you can buy in a, like a hardware store. And it tells you which ones work best. So that should give you some direction. And just make sure you use a also stainless steel whisk with that loop on the end. Makes a big difference. All right. So we have our pure pilings straightened out. I'm going to go ahead and hit return on my keyboard. And now we're going to go to the light tool and correct our white balance. In an image like this, I'm going to completely skip over using Enhance AI because when you have a really dark background and a really high contrast image, what that's, those sliders up here want to do is wake up all these shadows back here. And what I want to do instead is I want to keep that darkness back there, bring out the light, and just kind of balance things out a little bit differently. I don't want to brighten it up too much because we're already so bright right here. I think brightening up those shadows would make it very flat. So instead, I'm going to go straight to my light tool. And I'm going to start by bringing my temperature slider far, far, far over here to the left. And you see that's taking a lot of that oranginess out of it, and that's already looking better. But my, my pilings back here still look a little bit green, so I'll take my, my tint slider and move that ever so slightly to the right. And just those couple of adjustments, this looks much cooler. You can now see if you zoom in out here, I've even caught a couple of stars out there. There's also a few dead pixels. That's, you know, that was just an older camera that I was using at the time. And now my dark sky has a bluish hue, which is much more pleasing than just flat black. So now I can play a little bit with this. Let's go to structure and pull our structure up a little bit. And that's adding some good texture there. I also like what Mystical does here. We can pull that up, but just a little bit. We don't wanna to add too much because we start to lose some of that detail. And I definitely want to pull that smoothness back down because I don't want to get rid of any detail. So it's a very subtle change. There's the before and then the after. I also found that glow was a little bit fun to use with this as well. Just so we can see what we're doing, I'm going to move that amount slider up a little bit higher. And you can see how that creates a really nice glow, but it does soften our detail. We have a couple of different options here. We have our soft focus. We have glow. That looks a lot better. We have our Orton effect. Not really fond of that in this image. And our Orton effect soft. I think for this image, I'm gonna go with glow. And then we can adjust that to the point that we like it. And I think right about there is good. We also have our advanced settings here. So we can adjust the softness, brightness, contrast, and warmth of that. I'm gonna actually bring that contrast up a little bit higher. And now let's take a look at what we did with glow. Here's the before and the after. So again, a very, very subtle change. If you want to get more creative with your toning, a couple of places you could go would be the mood tool. And to add a let to this, that's going to change how each of those colors are interpreted. And you can see as I mouse over these, it changes the look and feel of the image as a whole. So there's a lot of different creative options you can do with your toning here. That one looks kind of cool. Lots and lots of different options. Actually, I really like that color punch hot. But I think maybe it's a little bit strong, so I can grab that amount slider and pull that down. So it's just a hint of that redness that that brought in. So there's the before and the after. Uh, as a final touch here, what I'm gonna do is go to my vignette 
and I'm gonna add a really nice big soft vignette to this. So first I'm gonna start by bringing my amount slider all the way down to negative 100. I'm gonna make that size a little bit smaller. Go into my advanced settings. I'm gonna make this more round because this here, right, this swirl is my subject and that's where I want the center of my vignette to be and I want it to really kind of shape to those swirls. So from there, I'm gonna click on choose subject move the center of my vignette over so these swirls are right in the middle. And now I'm gonna bring that feather up nice and high because again, I want a nice big soft vignette. And then take the amount slider and pull that back up just so it brings us in a little bit more to the center of the image. And I think I will call that good. Let me go ahead and show you the before and the after. It makes a huge difference when you start playing with those tones and make sure you adjust the white balance. Um, a lot of times if I'm out shooting at night, I actually like to switch to the tungsten white balance depending on the kind of lighting that I'm in. And that gives you some rich blue in that dark sky. You can also adjust some of those brightness and those other tones later on. Um, make sure you're shooting in raw so you can adjust it with the most flexibility. But white balance with night shooting and light painting is going to be your best friend. So whether you, you try to set it right in the camera or whether you do it in post, make sure you visit the light tool and work with your temperature and tint here, that's gonna be make the biggest difference. All right, let me take a quick look here at the comments. Uh, Jerry would like to know what the length of the exposure was on that image. Let's take a look. I can go back here to catalog, double click on that image, and let's take a look at our info panel. So this was shot at ISO 100, 24 millimeters, and at F8 for 30 seconds. Um, and I was told by our, my friend who was actually leading this particular photo walk, this particular meetup, but that was like a really good starting point and I got great images with those settings. All right, 78 degrees film. This is when I opened Luminar AI plugin on my Mac photos, I was not able to access sky replacement. Why? Um, the only reason that that would typically not be accessible is if the photo has too small of a percentage of sky. So if your image only has a very, very small, small patch of sky, the AI can't recognize where the sky is. Now, if the image that you're looking at has a nice vast sky and it should be able to recognize it, send it into our support team at support at skyland.com so we can take a look at it. And you know we'll see what's going on with that because I think you have to have at least 20% of the image needs to be sky. So hopefully that helps you. All right, let me know in the chat if there's any other questions. I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, still wool photography and light painting is a lot of fun. It gets you out at night. It's great to do with friends, your photography friends, your camera clubs, things like that. So hopefully you get a chance to get out there and do that. For that, I'm going to go ahead and call it a day. I wish you guys a great afternoon, and I will see you tomorrow at our weekly wrap-up. Have a good rest of your day, everyone. Bye, all.